This project is sponsored by PCBWay. This year, PCBWay is organizing the 11th batch design contest from March 1st to April, April 31st. The PCBWay 11th batch design contest is here! Let's make your batch design a reality. And for a chance to win $500 in cash plus $300 with coupons. Design a badge using PCB, PCB Plus Assembly, PCB Plus 3D Printing, or similar methods featuring PCB Way and the number 11. Send it to sponsor at PCBWay.com. This contest is more than competition, it's a celebration of 11 years of innovation and chance to dream about the boundless possibilities ahead with PCB Way. Hello? Pulse induction metal detector operates on a principle based on sending short pulses of electrical current through a coil to create a magnetic field. This pulse lasts for a very short period, usually microseconds. When the pulse is transmitted, the magnetic field spreads outward from the coil. If there is a, a metal object near the coil, it, it disrupts this magnetic field. The coil then detects the change in magnetic field caused by this metal object and that results in a reflected pulse which is different from the normal pulse. This difference is processed and emitted in the form of a sound or short beeps with a frequency that changes depending on the distance and dimensions of the detected metal object. In several of my previous videos, I presented ways to make such a metal detector including one very similar with an Arduino Nano microcontroller. This time the device uses a more powerful ESP32 microcontroller board that also contains built-in Bluetooth. So now the construction is even simpler. The creator of the original project is Neko de Sarolo and you can find other great projects on that given author's page. His idea of symbiosis between a microcontroller and smartphone is ingenious. The microcontroller easily, easily accepts and transmits signal from an external electronic circuit and the smartphone is a powerful tool for processing as well as audiovisual presentation of the results. The input circuit is almost identical in all pulse induction metal detectors and consists of the following components. A surge coil consisting of 20 turns of insulated copper wire with a cross section of 0.4 mm square in the form of a circle with a diameter of 20 cm. Next, an operational amplifier integrated circuit. I specifically use the TL081, but the circuit work almost identically with OP07, LM741, and CA3130 integrated circuits. Next, a power MOSFET with one or two driver transistor. In this case, IRF740, BC. 547 and BC557, but approximate replacement can be used. A 7805 uh, voltage stabilizer to power the microcontroller board, and several resistor capacitors and diodes. The source signal is generated by the ESP32 board, and finally, this signal, which is depend on the coil, now processed and amplified, is returned to one of the inputs of the ESP32 for further processing. To power the metal detector, I use three lithium batteries connected in series, which is approximately 12 volts. Uh, the maximum total consumption of this metal detector is about 150 milliamp. During the initial testing, I was unable to fully activate the Android application. The Bluetooth connection was established normally. But at the moment when I press the refresh button on the application, it disappeared from the screen or an error ap appeared depending on the version of the Android operating system. Since the Android application is not mine, and normally I do not have the conditions and knowledge for any modifications. I focused on the on modifying the input part with the microcontroller 
especially the Arduino code. The changes consist of the following. I changed the order of the initial duty cycle value from 16 to 13 and the corrected line in the Arduino code look like init duty def value equal to 13. After this modification the Android application will work normally and we can start testing. First, let me explain how the application works. After first start, we go to Setup and select Metal Detector, metal detector version Spirit P. Then we go to Bluetooth settings and select the ESP32 Spirit P2. and go back. Now press refresh button. And from this moment the device is ready to work. The interesting fact is that we can very easily change the values for the generated frequency and duty cycle obtaining different performances depending on whether we want to detect massive or small metal object. We can change duty cycle or frequency. Next, let's use an oscilloscope to trace the shape and changes of the signal that we bring to the input of the microcontroller for further analysis. Uh, here's how it should look at the beginning. And now by bringing a metal object closer to the search coil, the amplitude and duty cycle of this signal change. This change is detected by the microcontroller and transmitted via Bluetooth to the smartphone which then gives an audio and visual notification. Now let's see how the detector reacts in approximately realistic conditions in the air, keeping in mind that the detection distance is significantly reduced on the ground.
Yes, for the performance of this metal detector, you can notice that they are almost identical to those of the previously presented metal detector with Arduino Nano, talking into account that they largely depend on the Android application, which in both cases is practically the same. And finally a short conclusion, this is a great example of cooperation between a microcontroller that receives data from an external circuit and partially process it and Android smartphone. This ingenious idea by Neko Desarolo has huge potential not only in this area but in many other devices in general considering that nowadays we all own a smartphone that has incredibly high processing power.